Hey guys, so today we're going to check out the Diesel VH4 by Brainworks. We just heard it in the mix and now we're going to go through each of the tracks individually and show you what we've got going on within the amp sim itself as well as any post-processing on each track. So starting up then we're going to go with the guitar left track and opening up the plugin you'll see it's a super simple interface, pretty much looks like the diesel amplifier and here we've got our gain, volume, treble, mid and bass for each of the four channels. You've got your channel selection here for channels one and two. We've also got a bright switch and you've got your depth and presence knobs on the master as well. And then clicking on the top of the amp brings in some of the post-processing options. So in here we've got our cab sims so we can choose those by clicking these buttons and you've got some information on the cabinet microphone and preamps on here as well if you just click the RC info button. We've also got a noise gate which we can turn on and off and some post EQ and a delay as well. So for the guitar left track then we're first going into the mercurial greed smasher with the level all the way up gain all the way down and the tone just above halfway about six going into channel 4 of the amp with the gain turned down slightly, uh, volume at halfway, treble up, mids down and bass down, and then overall we got the presence slightly up as well. So bounce down, that sounds like this. And then if we move quickly on to the guitar right channel, so the same track just on the other side. Uh, so for this one we're going into the Dr. Drive pedal by Audiority with the level just over halfway, it's quite a loud pedal anyway. Uh, drive all the way down, brightness about the same, sort of 6 or 7 and the tack just up slightly. That is then going into channel 3 of the amp with gain, about the same position as it was for the first track, but obviously now we're in channel three. Volume up slightly, treble up slightly, mids down, bass in the middle. And then we are going into the diesel 4x12, 21, which is a 57 on the cap, or two 57s on the cap. And I should say as well on the guitar left channel, so the cab that we're going into on that is 62 American 4x12. So that's a Mesa Boogie uh, 4x12 vintage 30s or a 57. So back to the guitar right channel then, bounce down, that sounds like this. And then the left and the right channel together sound like this. And then just quickly putting those two into the context of the rest of the mix. So then what I thought would be good to do is if I just show you the bus processing on the two guitars. Uh, so both the left and the right channel are both going into a guitar bus and in that we've got CLA 76 uh, just doing a bit of compression on both of those as well as some EQ taking out the lows uh, up to about 100 and the highs down to about 10,000 and then just a couple of frequencies on the uh, upper mids that we don't want. And then from the EQ, we're just going into the saturation knob by Soft Tube. And what I find this does with instrumental tracks is it really just sort of pushes the guitars to the front of the mix. Um, and I can show you the difference in what they sound like with them on and off. So I'll start with the Soft Tube saturation knob off and then we'll turn it on as we're playing the track. <laughs> So 
So a bit of a volume increase, but also it's doing something to just help sort of uh, push uh, the two rhythm tracks to the front of the mix. So they're nice and clear, we can hear them. And then last thing on the guitar bus, we've got the S1 Imager, just adding a bit more width to the left and right tracks, uh, set to about 1.4, and that just helps sort of open up the middle of the mix. And then finally, for the two guitars, we've just got them going into a reverb, uh, turned down super low, and we've got EQ going into the reverb up to about 300 hertz, just taking out any low end, um, and then another image on that reverb, just giving those guitars even more width. And then something that I did uh, just for the intro part of the song, I noticed the guitars on the single note riff were sounding a little bit weak. Um, so what I did was just take the left track and the right track and then drop one of them down an octave and the other up an octave and just added those into the mix just to sort of help thicken out that sound. Uh, and I can show you what these two sound like individually. So these have the same settings within the VH4 and they're also going into the guitar bus. Uh, so if I play these individually, starting with the lower octave, So not very loud in the mix at all with that one. And then going up to the high octave. So whilst not super loud in the mix, I find that having those two octaves in really do sort of help thicken out uh, the riff and I can show you what they sound like with them off and then on if we play everything else So if we start with the two tracks off then I'll bring them in as we go So super subtle you sort of can barely hear it really but it just I think just help again bring the guitars forward and sort of especially on those single note riffs where they can sound a little bit weak compared to everything else really just help power, uh, thicken them all up. So then moving on to the lead guitar track so this is going into the Greed Smasher as well with the level turned uh, slightly down just above halfway gain all the way down and then tone pretty much exactly in the middle. This is going into the VH4 on channel three with the gain down slightly from halfway and treble up, mids up and the bass down. And if we go into the cabs, this is going into the 62 American 4x12. So the same uh, Mesa Boogie and mic position as we have for the guitar left channel. Then on the bounce down version of the lead tracks, we're going into some more compression from the CLA 76 and some EQ taking out more of the low end all the way up to 200 hertz on this one and high end up to about 11,000 hertz and then taking out some of the upper mids as well there. Finally for the lead track itself is then just going into some reverb which we've got set up on our AUX3. Uh, so this is the same reverb that the clean guitar and drums are going into but as you can see we've not, we're not actually sending that much of the lead guitars into the reverb. So the lead guitars on their own then sound like this. And that sort of may sound quite thin and weak on its own, um, but in the context of the mix that's really what we want from the lead guitars. We don't want too much of that low end information being taken up with the lead guitars, you really want to save that for the bass and for the rhythm guitars. So actually listening to that in the context of the rest of the mix sounds like this. So you can hear it just sort of fits all together quite nicely. And then on a section later on in the song, uh, we've got a lead guitar which has some delay on it. 
Um, so it's exactly the same amp settings, but we've just added a bit of delay on there as well from the Valhalla Echo. And then what we've also done is put the soft tube saturation plug in on and turned it up about a third of the way. And that again is just pushing that lead to the front of the mix so we can hear it as it is the focus at that time. And on its own, that lead channel sounds like this. <laughs> Not a particularly great lead line, I'm not much of a lead player, but in the context of the rest of the mix I think it sounds quite good. So then moving on to our clean guitar channel. Um, so this is going straight into the VH4 onto channel one, move the volume up a bit, not messed around with the EQ too much, just pushing the middles up and bass down. We've also taken the depth down and presence up a bit. And for the cabs in, we are using again the 62, the uh, Mesa Boogie 4x12 Vintage 30 with 57. From there, the clean is then going into some compression on the CLA 76. And finally, a bit of EQ, just taking out some of the lows up to 147, leaving room for the bass and boosting up. I noticed some of the sort of upper mids in the clean could use a little bit more, uh, more presence. So boosted those up a little bit as well. The cleans then are going into the same reverb as the lead guitar. But as you can see from this, we're actually sending more of the clean into the lead guitar. So isolated on their own, the cleans sound like this. context of the rest of the mix sounding like this. So really important when you are doing the cleans that you do leave room for the bass guitar to do its thing as well because it can be too easy to sort of have that build up of bass and everything just starts to sound a little bit muddy. So with that then we can move on to the bass very quickly. So we're not using the um, diesel VH4 plugin for the clean bass, we're actually using the Plugin Alliance Ampeg SVT Pro. And we've got this set to pretty much the default settings. All I did was just change the frequency on the mid-range uh, to bring down some of the, uh, you could hear some of the pick attack on the string, so just removed that. And we've also got some pre-EQ for the bass, removing some of the top end, and lastly just going into some compression. So on its own then, the bass sounds like this. So nothing too spectacular, but it's not getting in the way of uh, any of the guitars, so all good there. And what we've also got for the bass is a distorted track for when the distorted guitars come in, just to help thicken out everything in the lower mids. And for the bass distorted track, so we just copied the clean track that we've got here, moved it down onto its own track, and then added some EQ, taking out the low end and the top end, so really just focusing on that low mids area and then running in that into the VH4 on channel four. I think these are the same settings that we had for the guitar left channel. That on its own sounds like this. So pretty quiet as well, but if we play it along with the bass, you can see how it helps support it. And then if I play that with the rest of the mix, and then what I'll do is just mute the distorted bass so you can sort of hear it with and without. So if we start with it muted. So 
So pretty quiet, another sort of subtle difference, but it's all of these small changes that you can make in a mix that sort of have an overall big impact. So then the last of the instruments that we're using then is just the drum track. And for this, we are using the One Kit Wonder Aggressive Rock, and that's just in contact. Uh, all the post-processing is done within contact for that, so we don't have to worry about it. And then that's just going to the same reverb as the lead and the clean, but about the same sort of level as we had the lead. So that's it for all of our individual instrument tracks. Um, then we go on to some of the buses. So we've already gone over the rhythm guitar bus with the compression, EQ and saturation. And that's the same for the reverb track for the rhythm guitars. We've gone over those and then just a reverb track for the cleans. So the last bus we've got is the master bus for which we are going into the CLA mix down with all of the settings pretty much at default we turned the gain reduction down um, just so we noticed we were getting a bit too much compression on the full mix and we also turned uh, the input down as I was coming into it a little bit hot with all the different instruments that we have. Then we go into the API 560 and all we're using for this is just to drop down um, some of the lows. We had a bit of a peak sort of around the 50, 60 hertz area. So we just use the API just to drop that and that's nice and easy to do. And then lastly, just to bring everything up to uh, normal sort of mastering volumes, we're using the L1 limiter and just bringing the threshold down to and the out ceiling just below zero. And that's everything that we've sort of got in the track. Not actually uh, that much really, just sort of the two main guitar tracks, lead guitar, clean, uh, bass doubled, and then drums, and then just a few different uh, mix buses. So yeah, it doesn't take a huge amount to sort of get quite a, a heavy sound. Um, it's just making sure that you don't have too many instruments competing for the same uh, space sort of in the in the sound spectrum. So thanks for watching. That's been our overview and mix breakdown using the Diesel VH4 plugin by Brainworks. It's a really good plugin. Uh, not that you'd expect anything less from Brainworks, and is available quite often on sales from pl the Plugin Alliance website, or you can also get it on the Musicians Bundle, which is about ten dollars a month. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really sort of helps support the channel and shows me that you're interested in these mix breakdowns and showing you how I sort of put these these songs together. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.